global variable unless you define it as global within it. But we're not getting that in depth in it. So, all right. What we have here, dollar sign i is a variable. What's a variable? A variable is a storage location. It's where we're storing a number. All right. A variable can only have one value at a time. All right. And in this case, our variable i our variable i is going to have a value of 0 initially. All right? We are going to execute the body of the loop then. We are going to continue to execute the body of the loop until as long as i is less than 6. All right? And so how many times are we doing this loop? Six. We're doing it six times. All right? Because you start with zero. All right? That is the perpetual plus or minus one programming problem. You know, it's very, it can be confusing at times, like how many times you're doing this. And like, you, usually off the top of your head, well, I'm doing it five times. Well, you might be doing it six, you might be doing it four. Right? You have to really think about it. Each time through the loop, we are incrementing i by one. That's what I plus plus means. So, what we're doing here is we hit this block. We set I to zero. I is less than six, so we're okay to continue. So we go and execute this block of code. We come up then here, increment I by one, so I now has a value of one. One is still less than six, so we do it a second time with i having a value of 1. We come back up, increment it, i has a value of 2 now. We execute this block of code, all right, increment it, i has a value of 3. And we do that over and over again until the last time, i has a value of 5. We do it, we increment it by 1. i no longer is less than 6, therefore we drop out of the loop, all right. So what this is a loop for, the end result is this is going to do this chunk of code six times. All right. If I wanted to make it seven times, I could do this. This is typically how you do it by convention. You could do this. You could say i equal to one. So i is less than or equal to 6, and it would work the same way. All right? Yeah. I'll tell you, the, the, the typical reason why you usually see loops written this way is a lot of times you're looping through arrays. And with array, the subscript starts with 0. And this, instead of being hard-coded at 6, is going to be the length of the array. So if there's 6, you know, it'll start from 0 and go to 0 to 5. Anyhow, is everyone clear what this does? And again, what gets repeated? The stuff between this curly bracket and this curly bracket. So in PHP, those curly brackets are used to um, define a block of code. All right? Yes? The curly bracket does define something in PHP. It, defends, it defines the end of the block. The HTML code is the code that's going to be between the curly bracket, the two curly brackets. Because if you had that outside, that curly bracket would show up in your That screen. would just be a plain HTML, and a curly, you get a curly bracket on the screen. Okay. Right? In other words, that's a construct within PHP. All right, the, the curly bracket. It designates a block of code. So it's a block of code for if statements. It's a block of code for functions. It's a block of code for a lot of things. And in this case, it's a block of code for loops. So again, this is a little bit of a confusing one because the body of the loop is actually pieces of HTML. But the loop structure itself is defined in PHP, and therefore that end braces is needed.
with that. So let's look at this. Let's look at this loop in more detail. Oh, I actually got the, the statement exactly right. So, here's our start loop. Here's our block of HTML that forms the body of the loop. And here's our PHP ending brace, which indicates the end of that loop structure. Inside of it, then, we have our LI. We give it a class name. We create a div for field contain. That's a way of grouping fields together. And then, if you notice, a couple of things. The label. And the ID, we briefly pop into PHP for just a second to print I. All right. We don't do that with name, but we could. In fact, if I was doing this, I would do it with name as well, but they don't. And we also do that for size, for the ID, and so on. Question. What? Well, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Doesn't the li have to be? Why doesn't the li have to be nested in a ul? It is. In a ul or no? Okay. Yeah, it is. It's just up there. Yes. Not to be difficult, but I have no clue why you jump back into PHP. Okay. Let Let's do this. All right. What are we? Do? Let, let's look first of all. What are we doing? We're printing i. Print and echo mean the same thing. So what we're doing is we're outputting to the browser the value of i. So let's do a view source. We do a view source, it's going to be crystal clear. Maybe. I was going to say, what if it's not crystal clear? <laughs> That's not what <laughs> uh, The reason is, is notice what we're doing with the ID. The first drop down has an ID of color dash zero. What is zero? Zero represents the value of the I the first time through the loop. What's the value of the next drop down? Or the ID of the next drop down? Color one. The value of the next one? Color two. And so on. So remember, an ID has to be unique. All right? So I couldn't call each of these an ID of color. Right? So I have to make it unique. How do I make it unique? Well, right smack dab in the middle of an HTML attribute, all right, this is even worse than anything we've done before, right, in, in terms of being unusual. In the middle of an HTML attribute, we pop out and tack on a number, a unique number, right, that corresponds to the value of i. So in other words, the first drop down gets an ID of color dash zero. The second one gets an ID of color dash one. So it's, it's kind of triggering the loop to keep going? No, it's actually outputting the value of that. All right, let me take this out. All right, let, let me take out that on the drop down. All right. And let me save it. And then let me copy that over to CI NetPub WW root. So if I go and I refresh this, and I look at the source now, as I scroll down, the first dropdown is called simply color. The second dropdown has an ID of simply color. Right? 
because if you look at my code here, I've said make the ID of that dropdown color. And I'm looping through and I'm making six of those dropdowns. So I'm creating six dropdowns all with the same ID. Well, flag down, right? That's not legal. Each ID must you point to must be unique. So therefore, what I do is I tack on the number that relates to the trip through the loop that I'm going. So the either the zero, the one, the two, the three, the four, the five. All right. And what that does then is that makes the IDs unique. Go ahead. That makes sense. All right. Why do we have to have IDs? We have to have IDs in this case because we're following rules of accessibility and we are creating a label that matches up to that ID. So that's why we're numbering them. That's, we're, we're numbering them because we're creating IDs. We're creating IDs for that label. And the label's for accessibility. And the label's for accessibility. Not for the loop to run properly. No. We okay. could eliminate, yeah. And you even saw, we, we could eliminate that. And, you know, we could eliminate the ID altogether and it would work. All right. But, again, by virtue of if you have to have an ID, it has to be unique. And, and therefore, we need to somehow tack something on. And we know it's going to be unique no matter how many trips through the loop we take. You know, this is going to go from 0 to 5. If we change this to go 10 times through the loop, it would go from 0 to 9. So it's going to be a unique number because that I is going to have a unique value each trip through the loop. That's just cool. <laughs> it is. And in fact, like, what we can do, you know, you can do all sorts of cool things like this. For example, you know, if you had pictures, all right, and you knew that they were numbered 0 through 100, right? You wouldn't have to write 100 image tags in. You'd write a loop that looped through 100 times and created that SRC attribute for an image. The first SRC, you know, make it phpi.jpg, and it would output for image 0, and then image 1 and 2 and 3, and so on. Or... If you're pulling something from a database, all right, you could go and, you know, Amazon, which has a product as a picture of the product. It pulls from a database the name of that image. What does the server-side script on Amazon site do and what could we do in PHP? We could take that image name and pop it right in the middle of an image tag and then would get the desired image. So again, the whole I remember the whole idea of this server-side scripting is we're writing code that generates a web page. And the reason why we're writing code to generate it is because it's easier that way. It's easier for me to write a little PHP loop and include that block of code in than me copying and pasting that code six times. Especially when you consider what if I had a new color I wanted to add or whatever any kind of change I had, you know, if I cut and paste it six times, I'd, I, I could make a mistake one of the times. But if I do it in the loop here, I make the change, boom, everything gets a change. So this is the, this is how people are taking a zillion photos and then that, when they dump them into the images folder, it's that little technique that allows all of them to be formatted on the page without them hard coding it? Yeah, it, it, in the case of that, in the case of where you were, um, in the case of where you, you put all your images out to a folder, you'd probably use something a little bit different. You probably would use, um, you, you, you would get a directory listing for PHP of, of your images folder, and then you'd loop through each time. All right, so it would be a slightly different technique, but it would be very similar to this. All right, same idea. You're looping through and you're executing something a bunch of times, and each time through, you're customizing the output a little bit um, to do that. Because, you know, I mean, your, your images are not likely going to be named 0.jpg, 1.jpg, 2.jpg. Your images are going to be named whatever they're named, right? So therefore, I couldn't numerically scan through those, but I could get a directory listing, and I could show the images, you know, in, in a tag. In fact, just for laughs,
Let's take this snippet of code. Let's take this snippet of code here and let's make a new little PHP file. I'm going to open the directory named images. I think that's what those are called. No, they're called targets. And let's save this. I really think that people follow me around and cut their grass. Because <laughs> I swear, Saturday morning, I'm like trying to sleep in, and some joker's next to me cutting their grass. And if any of you, any of my neighbors watch this YouTube video, I don't mean you, I mean like the, the <laughs> other joker. Yeah, the other side. I had the same thing it, just, so it drives me crazy, because it's like, I mean, I, you know, good on you that you're up and at them that early on the morning on a Saturday, but, you know, come on, man, you know, I want to rest, you know. People at the, at the crack of noon cutting their grass, what's wrong with them? <laughs> Barbarians. Yeah, really, what's those, the problem? Those <laughs> All right. So what does this show? This shows, actually... Oh, I was mistaken. Tartans. Oh, those are web pages. I want to do the icons. Ah, that's the one I want. So I want to do Tartan slash icons. So. I do this, I see a list of all those files. Well, how do I turn that list of files into an image tag? Pretty easy, right? I can do this. I can pop out a PHP here. Pop back in. And simply put my image tag. Image SRC equals, I'll have to put the folder name, Tartan slash icons slash. Pop in a PHP to display the image name. And I could actually. display the entry as the alt attribute. I won't go through that. All right, I think that's right. Let me go and try this.
I could, if I wanted to, then, you know, put a little snippet of text underneath or next to it or whatever. But again, I'm digressing. Um, what was this called when you, when you Googled it? Uh, like, well, P, yeah, PHP directory list. The idea here, and the idea I want to reinforce with this, is that remember the purpose of server-side scripting. The purpose of server-side scripting is to write a web page for you. To do, because it is sometimes easier to write a program to do something than to do it yourself. In other words, every one of you could go through and type in 68 image tags, right, and get the names right, maybe, you know, provided you didn't typo. Of course, if someone added a new image in there, you'd, you'd have to go back and revise that and whatever. Or you can write a script that says, hey, this is a very repetitive process, all right? Just, you know, gee, if we can get a way to list all those, we can go and we can, uh, within a PHP loop, output um, an image tag for each one of them, and it will go a lot easier, all right? So um, I, I guess that's sort of the, 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 the thing that, the PHP portion of this that I want to get across is the fact that, remember, PHP is your friend in that it can help you write the web page. So we had if statements that allowed us to write the web page a little differently if they're on mobile versus if they're on a desktop. Here we, uh, in, in the form example, we had uh, a loop that we could go to uh, do repetitive code over and over again. All right? And then here, I guess we're doing the same thing. We're doing some repetitive code. Could, could you add a line to that where you just give it a generic title like picture one or so that the, the uh, that same variable would kick in in terms of then all your tartans would then have like image one, two, three, four, five, you know, all the way up there? Nope, we can't do that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm, yeah. I'm just trying, <laughs> yeah. I'm just getting yeah. To, to see how I could structure the yeah. other replicating yeah. HTML. Of course we would. I mean, we could put any HTML code we wanted to in here. So we could put a paragraph there. We could put a heading. And now this is a slightly different kind of loop because it's not doing it a certain number of times. But we certainly could declare a variable for i, set it to 0, Increment i each time through the loop by ourselves. And then output an i somewhere in there, in an h1 tag or, or something. All right. So to answer your question, yeah, yeah, we, we, can, yeah we, we can do that if we want to do it. Or we could take the name, you know, in this case, the name of the tartan, is actually meaningful, right? It's not just a, a, an image name. In other words, this is the Brian Tartan, all right? We could actually strip off that file name and, and, and use that as a label to say this is the Brian Tartan, all right? We actually, oh, this would be a good assignment. Ooh, the wheels are turning. <laughs> I, 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 I feel like I feel like a James Bond villain sometimes. You start stroking yes. your beard. Yeah, right, right, right. Like, <laughs> yes, yeah. What does that mean for this page? Let's let's back up a second. And again, there's other stuff with this. There's there's the dividers, and you can see the jQuery mobile stuff for this. Um, notice they have a. List divider for tell us about your tartan that makes that list item look a little bit different. Field contain that sort of groups together fields. Notice how these fields have like a box around them. All right. And then we have actually a HTML range element, type equals range. That's a new HTML5 element 
that is this little slidey, slidey bar that goes back and forth. So we can use that to show that. So review the jQuery mobile stuff in here too. That's pretty straightforward. That's why I really didn't focus on it. You know, you can, if you look at this example and break it apart and play with it and maybe get rid of the style sheet to see how it looks like unstyled, to see the HTML5 stuff in there and then add the style sheet back in to see what jQuery is doing with it. But I guess what I'm interested in is this page here. And again, I know why they did it. You know, this is not a PHP class, or that's there, it's not a PHP book. But let's look at this Tartan's page. Oh my goodness. So that would be an example where they didn't. That'd be an example where they did <laughs> not go and do this. That's an awful lot of typing. Copy and paste. Copy and paste, copy and, paste copy. and what if you get it wrong? And what if you did it in another place? So hypothetically, if I was looking for something to do on Wednesday, this might be, we might have this as an activity. Let's see if we can put our heads together and recreate this page using a PHP loop instead of using a instead of using a, um, I, I don't know, this, this, might, uh, this might be a little hard, but again, this kind of thing should set off the, 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 the sirens in your head. Um, so I don't know if I'll have this in activity, because we actually have two things. We have the href, and we have the actual tartan image itself. We might be able to do one or the other. Um, I don't know. We'll see, we'll see what kind of mood I'm in, if I'm in a... James Bond villain kind of mood, maybe we'll do that. Uh, otherwise, maybe not. All right, anyhow. I want to talk about um, the jQuery mobile theme roller because if you notice, this is kind of the default style that you get, right, with, with jQuery. Um, if you look here and you search for jQuery mobile, theme roller, there's actually a little thing that generates a theme for you. And what is a theme? Um, I found this a little confusing when I started off. Essentially what you can do is you can uh, define Yeah. You can define, I don't know if there's a limit on the number of swatches you can define, but you can define a several like color swatches. And then you can associate those color swatches with elements in your page. So for example, I'm going to do an A and a B. Um, the A, I'm going to make, let's see, header and footer bar, I'm going to make The text red and the background, whatever color that is. All right. So that is 